What's your concern about what's happening in this election? Well, I'm concerned with a total collapse of what America represented to me when I lived in the communist country. For me, America was a beacon of freedom, okay? And the beacon is getting dimmer and dimmer. And I'm afraid that the beacon will stop shining at all. And believe me, living in the communist country for 33 years, I know a communist when I see one or two, or, or when I see the Obama administration. Uh -huh. But uh, do you suppose that that would be continued under a Hillary Clinton administration? Absolutely, it would be worse. worse. It would be much worse because How? Obama is probably idealistic. He's a pro-Muslim. I believe he's a Muslim. He, both his fathers, biological and adoptive, were Muslims. Uh -huh. He lived in Indonesia. Right. He's probably fluent in Indonesian. Right. And he, so he's a Muslim. However, I still believe that Obama is more idealistic than uh, very pragmatic Hillary Clinton because Hillary Clinton is is extremely and straight selfish, pragmatic, money and power hungry. Like megalomania. megalomania, greed. I believe that what Obama started, she would actually bring to perfection in much harsher terms because she's also cruel completely no empathy she's a cruel sadistic? cold Resistant. maybe even sadistic there is lots of hate in her so i think that still is still there is still some difference between personal traits of obama and clinton ideologically they are on the same boat Piven strategy? Yeah, Klau so, uh, Alinsky, Cloward, Piven, Marxism, uh, Marshall Davis, you know, all that stuff. But Obama, I think, is not as cruel, pragmatic, and cold hearted as Hillary Clinton. And so, I think there is a difference uh -huh. in personal traits, not much in political but in personal traits. Uh -huh. w would you have a message then for voters who are saying, oh, I could never vote for Donald Trump because he's, uh, he's a lech, or lecherous? I mean, uh, what's the choice for Americans in th uh, who are thinking about their future? Well, with Trump, I will vote for Trump. He wasn't my candidate, you know, he wasn't my first choice. He was my choice number 17, but he got the nomination. So I'll have to vote for him because he's the last hope to stop the bleeding. Because if we get Trump as a president, we still have some chance to control the Senate, control the House. If Hillary wins, this country is done. So with uh, Trump, there is still chance. And also, it looks like Trump, Trump recognizes the dangers of Islam. Hillary Clinton calls Islam a religion. She calls it actually a religion of peace. I think uh, Trump is much closer to the knowledge, to the notion that Islam is basically a political movement whose ideology masquerades as a religion. And it's a totalitarian political movement, very similar to fascism, Nazism, communism, pretty much the same thing. Is there a risk to uh, bringing these uh, uh, Syrian immigrants, uh, Arab immigrants, from uh, the war that uh, got dispossessed? Yes, from my point of view, there is a grave risk. Now look, when I defected from then communist Czechoslovakia, I'm an anti-communist, okay? I spent half a year with my wife. We spent half a year of living in Spain as political ref refugees in transit. Then we were moved to Italy. We were interviewed, photographed, fingerprinted. I was militarily debriefed. We got X-ray of the chest, blood tests. So we were tested for tuberculosis, cancer, political opinions. We had, we had to obtain a guarantee from the United States that somebody would sponsor us and we wouldn't be in the public care. These people have absolutely no vetting. These refugees. 
Syrian refugees, first of all, how do you know they are from Syria? They're from Middle East, okay? How do you know they, they are refugees? I don't actually call them refugees, I call them colonists. How many of these refugees are women with children? Very few. There are mostly young men, single, with cell phone. Who pays for those cell phones? They refuse, in Hungary, they refused water and food. They don't need it. All they needed is train to Germany. These are not refugees, these are colonists. What are they trying to uh, colonialize uh, the West with? They are trying to conquer the uh, Dar al-Harb. Islam divides the, the world into two parts. Uh, Dar al-Islam or uh, Dar al-Salam and Dar al-Harb, which means house of peace, of house of Islam and house of war. House of war is any territory outside of Islamic world. So what they're trying to do is to defeat the house of war. Conquer? Conquer, the con conquer, conquer yes. Yeah, yeah, conquer the West? Yeah, yeah, exactly. It's uh, the, don't forget, as I told you before, Islam is a political movement whose ideology masquerades as a religion. So their goals are political, more, uh, Look, 61% of Quran is dedicated to dealing with non-Muslims. That's not theology, that's politics. Okay? Okay. If you have a holy book which, which doesn't actually instruct you how to worship your God, it's not theology, it's politics. Islam actually doesn't deal with worshiping God very much. Because 61% is dedicated to dealing with non-Muslims. The rest, great portion of the rest, is dedicated of dealings Muslims to Muslims. Who inherits what, how to have or not have sex with female slaves, stuff like that. It's not theology. And actually, when you have to understand all this, you have to ask your question. When, why and how was Islam conceived? Okay? It was a counterweight to thriving Judaism and Christianity. So it was a political response okay, in the seventh century. Not to, uh, Islam didn't bring any new theology. Okay? There is nothing new in Quran. There is, no new, there is no new deity. Actually, Quran recognizes Jesus Christ as a prophet in two surahs, Mary and Imran's. Even Immaculate Conception is mentioned in Quran. Again, twice, in Imran's and Mary. Imran being the Mary's uh, family name, M Mary of Imran's. So, all this is old theology. Okay? New is the policy. What do you mean the policy? How to deal with non-Muslim, what to do with them, what to do to them. Then you have to know the uh, Treaty of Umar, which in which Christians promise, after being conquered by Muslims, to do or not to do certain things. The Treaty of Umar is very similar to Nazi uh, anti-Jewish laws of Nuremberg. There is one big difference. Nuremberg laws were imposed by Nazi government on the Jews. Umar's treaty is a submission of Christians to Islam. So, if Christians violate the Umar Treaty, they must acknowledge, well, yeah, I violated my own promise, my own pledge. And it's actually on the bottom of the footnote of the Umar Treaty. So I realize that if I violate this promise, I will be prosecuted. <laughs> very smart. Thank you very much. You're welcome.